Hello and welcome to this week's YouTube vlog from Barton Orbana Services and we hope that you're all doing okay. As always, thank you to everybody who watched last week's vlog and for all the lovely comments. We love them, so please do keep them coming. And if you haven't already subscribed, then please do. It costs you absolutely nothing. So as Rob mentioned at the end of last week's video, he's on annual leave again this week. So it's over to Ryan and Ben for this week's video. And what they've done is taken you along on a few breakdowns. And we hope you enjoy seeing what they've got up to this week. So all I can say is over to this week's YouTube vlog. Ah, oh, hello. So I'm um, going back to the Robert curse of when he's off Argus catches fire. Um, I'm currently back at the Argus, which I mentioned caught fire because, um, well, we didn't knock it off and obviously it's way too what. So, well, when I first came, it wasn't hot enough, then it was too what, and now we've soon found out what happens. This is how you know that an Arga is, um, is getting way too hot. Arga has a reputation of blowing up the doors and catching fire. And the way you know it is, well, if you look at it, it's not even turned on, there's already a bit of oil in there. And this flow control, when it's running, it literally has to be an absolute bare minimum because it's ejecting way too much fuel. And sometimes when we service it, it keeps switching itself off because the float level's too high. So yeah, this is the problem this Arga. It keeps injecting too much fuel. So I just made sure the Arga is uh, nice and level, and which it is. And then you also know it runs hot because just look how bent everything is. I say it shouldn't cause a problem because it's always been like that. So I'm going to turn it on. As I say, when I turned off, it will slot down. As you can see, it goes up when it's turned on and makes a click. She literally, the second it clicks, you have to leave it now, bare minimum, or else it comes in way too quickly. And then we'll look in here and you'll soon see if we wait long enough. There you go. You can see it's an absolute bare minimum and it's coming flying through already. So my plan of action is, now it's coming through, I'm gonna put it back together. The second it's back together, I'm gonna to stick a match to it while there's not too much oil in there. And hopefully it should be a bit better while we do further investigation. And just look at it, it's already flooded. It's coming in way too quick. Another quick shout out to Grandad for the, um, the amazing Argo lifter. And for the people that say that, oh, they've been around for years and years and years, we've never seen one that's just this simple. Yes, we know they're around, you get like barrel lifters and stuff, but it's just, it just rolls on and off. It's such a simple design. So the Argus flooding, I say very, very quickly, I put all the top back into it. And the thing which I hate about older Argus is that, look how much room they give you to light it. Here we go. We've just lit the Arga and um, it's looking like it's doing exactly the same thing the last time. Actually, to be fair, it's a bit more blue in it this time. Last time it was um, completely yellow, but we'll see what happens. I don't think I gave it quite long enough. I mean, getting there, it's, it's, it's a lot more promising than it was, so hopefully it just goes up and it's a lot better. To be fair, it's looking promising. Update. Um, I've never been so happy to see any bits to see blue flame in my life. That means it isn't going to explode, thank God. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to sit for five more minutes, make sure it's all happy. Um, hopefully the customer comes home soon so she can keep an eye on it. And, um, yeah, hopefully it doesn't explode. And then um, we'll go from there. What I find really funny is that I really panic about Lizarga and she does not care whatsoever. She, <laughs> when she first told me, it's like, yeah, you need to be careful. This one, the doors just blow off. It's like a normal conversation. I was like, oh. Amazing, so that's what I'm getting myself into. But um, yeah, that's that for this one. We just got a call in. There's a house that is having heating problems. They have hot water, but no heating. Now, my plumber brain is saying, simple. It's got two two-port valves. The heat might have gone wrong, but it's a combi boiler. It's a little bit different. So let's go have a look together, shall we? Right now, I'm assuming it's rather going to be the PCB board, which I don't have on my van, or it's going to be the heating circulation pump. The heating circulation pump, 100% is the most common. So I'd say we've got a pretty good chance here of being that, and I'll show you how to change one. I've arrived. I have a Grant Combi boiler. The customer has hot water, perfect hot water, but no heating. Now, on a grant like this, I have already disconnected it. Um, but what happens is, you see, 
no valves on a combi boiler. So straight away, heating, no hot water. It's obviously not a valve because there's no valves. What you do is, first of all, get the boiler on. You'll get the, obviously, usually, the DHW hot water pump on first. Let that satisfy. Don't use any hot water taps. Leave them totally turned off. Let that satisfy until that light switches to the central heating pump. Once it's switched to the central heating pump, you can then come up. Now, this is the heating pump here for the heating, the rads. This is the hot water pump down here for the hot water. Look at the state of it. We will be saying something about all this because that's, uh, that's actually a little bit leaky. Anyway, so for me, really simple check. You feel that? You can barely touch it because it's so hot, right? But that's barely hot at all, you see. So very clearly, that pump there is not circulating. Right, let's get it changed. So first things first, how you get started in changing one of these is you've got two valves here. Number one, number two. Rotate these to the right, do the valves up, meaning you don't have to drain anything. But occasionally... They don't shut and it's <laughs> water goes everywhere. So today there's hope and pray that they do shut or will be draining down. Right, so I've got both the valves shut now and I've popped this off. So as you can see, the reason that I ca always carry an exact identical one, which they're a bit out of date now, to be fair. Um, you sort of put new ones on really, but I always try and have one of them on. Because as you can see, the wires are just like that. So literally all you have to do is unpop them pull them back, pull them wires out. I'm gonna do it with one hand. And then take that out, slide it back in. Easy as that. So yeah, I'm gonna uh, undo these two things now. Get the pump out and I'll see you again. Right, so they're out. As you can see, this time I've got very lucky. My valve has closed. Now, because lots of people ask, firstly, I use these mini Nipex grips. Shout out Nipex, best grips on the planet as we probably already know to do these up much better than adjustable 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 just literally up 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 nip 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 easy and then to get these undone adjustable span is absolutely fine you have to have quite a wide jaw one to get these undone but personally again i use the nipexes absolutely fantastic usually i'd use my auto adjusting pair um but they don't have such a wide grip than this so like I say, all you need is a pair of these, a pair of these, and I tell you, you could do absolutely anything on a Grand Combi. Right, so here's a new one, very simple. We've got a live, a neutral, and an earth. And I have a live, neutral, and an earth. Make sure you undo this nut first, obviously. Slide that over, push it through, get it wired up. I wire it first, I don't know why, it's a bit ridiculous, but for some reason I do. Just thought I'd show you this quickly as well as a lot of people probably would know. But look, when you pull these back, opens up the little hole, look, for you to slip your wire in. Shut it. Like that. Don't do these. Don't do this. Thinking, brilliant. Let go of it. Oh, that's shut. Brilliant. Make sure. Put it all the way home. Yeah? Got my wires in. Next step, obviously, make sure that you do this nut up here. If you don't, the wires will be loose. This holds the wire in place. Cover goes on top, just like that. I don't think I'm going to do it with one hand because I'm not that cold. No, anyway, forget about that for now. The next step is, as you can see, we've got two valves. Right, we must put the rubber washers inside. Now, I can guarantee you, if you are doing this yourself, this is the hardest thing about any any flipping circulation pump. Trying to get these on here, so don't just stay there. At the same time, it's trying to slide that in and do the nuts up. So yeah, I, what I usually do is put the pump in first, because we've got a bit of play with the pipe look, very easy. So you put the pump in first, hold it nice and tight so it's there, the seal's there, do that one up first vice versa you've got some play there do that one up easy but it's a lot harder than it looks they're fiddly little things so as you can see nice new pump in there la -dee, la -dee, la valves are undone gonna run the boiler in a minute make it all live and show the next step anyway but just have a quick recap first things first do up 
them two valves, stop the water flow. Second thing, undo these two here, pump slide out. Take this cap off, don't cut the wire, take the cap off, take the wires out, remove pump. New pump in place, seal in there, new, new seal in there, wires back in, put them in, do this up, undo these two valves, bosh. Lastly, another little top tip. Once you've undone these valves all the way, you've got no leaks, just like me, and you know that you're all good, you're ready to go. Let me undo this one fully. Look at that speed, look. Right, so that is now fully undone. It does not go any further that way. Make sure that when you have fully undone it, you just turn it that way a little bit. Yeah, it leaves it loose like this. That's no problem and it means if this ever goes again, they're not going to be seized and they're actually going to be able to do up and undo again. Right. Now, time to put the plug back in. Again, it's boiler's estate. Got a nice new gasket in there, like that. Plug this in like so. Now, central heating pump's on, because again, we waited originally for the domestic hot water, DHW, to warm up. We've got the pump, as we can hear this time, I don't know if you can hear or not. Pump circulating. Away we go. That was quite simple in the end. Like I said, I, I, did, I did expect it to be that heating pump. You see, because of how the PCB boards are on the Grand Compies, they're designed to not have any valves. The second you turn the heating on, the heating pump gets kicked in away it goes same vice versa with the hot water you turn or your hot water is always on but the circulation pumps on shoots it around anyway so again simple you look at it you would make sure that the dhw the hot water pump light goes off you wait for the ch pump light to come on if you're not getting any heat in your radiators that could be one of two things usually, rather the PCB board just broke and it's not telling it to do the right thing or usually what happens is the circulation pumps get stuck. Now what you can do, if you're not confident enough to go right okay it's not circulating, I'm not really sure, I'd say about 9 times out of 10 if you smack it with a hammer and wait about 5 minutes, um, because you smacked it with a hammer it's jolted it, you know, it's made it start circulating again the radiator is, oh, they're getting warm now. I know that that pump's getting stuck. I've, I've hit it with a hammer, not too hard, obviously. You give it a tap. I've hit it with a hammer. Now the radiators are getting warm. Obviously that pump need, needs changing. It's another way to get you out of trouble as well. If obviously, say you know it's that pump and you don't have one on board to replace it with. Obviously you can punch it and then the next day you'll be able to get the part and replace it. So that one, it was actually really simple. I hope that kind of helped you a little bit into understanding, again, why a Grand Combi doesn't have heating or, again, vice versa, hot water, because it's exactly the same with, thing with the hot water. So, um, I've got a couple of services to go do now. They're very boring. And to be honest, I'll probably be nattering with the customers while I'm there over a cup of tea doing their boiler. So, probably won't record much, but it's currently one o'clock at the moment. So, there's a lot of hours left in the day so let's see what comes in see if we can get any more any more content for the day now look at this bad boy we have oh it's not a my symbol there it's a danes more but it's not actually it's not even a worcester danes more it's an original danes more pretty awesome the thing i quite which, which i find is actually a really really good idea it's nice and easy for the customer is that the control box is that the top so normally they're at the bottom, you've got to bend over, that can be quite difficult to get in. But no, this one's right there, right in front of you. The new board is good, they're more efficient, but you just can't beat these. They're, they're just water valve compared to new stuff, aren't they? So a good thing about old boilers, which new boilers don't have. Is that you can actually see the flames. So you can see all the flames through here, that can be quite handy, really. Right, um, I just realised, I just showed you a video of a random boiler, if you don't even know what's going on. So I went to that boiler, so what was happening was the fan was all spinning, it was all spinning, it will fire up, and about five seconds later, it will cut out. 
So if your boiler ever does that, that means it's not detecting the flame properly, not detecting the light. So there's normally, well, there's three things that can be. It's rather, well, two of them is to do the photo cell. One of them, basically, if the little sensor is covered up with some dirt, then it's, um, it's going to struggle to see that flame because it's covered. Here we're reading a bit of dirt instead of the flame. So I checked that, and now it's nice and clean. And then if it still does it, you change the photo cell, and then um, if that doesn't fix it, then that means it'd be the control box. Because sometimes when the photo cells go faulty, it's because the control box sends the wrong signal to the photo cell, and then that burns out the photo cell. And if you just change the photo cell, just rather keep doing it and doing it and doing it, or it just won't work because the relay's gone in the control box. So, as I say, if your boiler's firing up and locking out about five seconds, it's because it's not detecting the flame. But it was quite cool seeing an old boiler. I love an old boiler. If you've got an old boiler up there, yes, you might use a lot of oil. Yes, it might be a bit inefficient. But do us all a favour and keep it. Because in reality, if you change it, you're downgrading. You might have a bit more efficient. But to be more efficient, there's more parts. More parts, more to go wrong. Harder for me. More money for you. So, lesson learned. Keep the old boilers. I'm going back to the previous clip because um, I missed a couple of things out because some of you in the comments, I, I know that you're going to make little comments. So um, if the photo cell's black, that's because your ball is burning too rich, which normally means the nozzle's gone faulty or it can be because it's windy or of course the ball is not set up properly. So if you're wiping that photo cell, get your heating engineer out now to come set your board up properly because you cause more damage than good. And also, before you change the photo cell, make sure there's nothing blocking the little sensor. Make sure there's no leads or anything. Because if you've got your photo cell, this little, yeah, that's the photo cell. I might actually have. Oh no, I chucked it. Right, this is the photo cell. This is the flame. The top of the steering wheel is the flame. If we got a little lead across it, it, it's not going to detect the flame, is it? And then it's going to be like, um, no flame, I'm not happy. Then it's going to cut out. So, yeah, I did miss them two little things. So you can't have a go at me now. Um, another thing is when Robert's off, he brings bad luck to the Argo world. Because if you go back a couple of vlogs ago, when he was last off, I had an Argo that caught fire. And then earlier, guess what? He's off again. I had another Argo that caught fire. So um, he's just bad luck. So, yeah, Robert, you are very, very, very unlucky. And um, speaking of Robert, um, it's quite funny. Whenever he's off, all the customers just assume he's retired. <laughs> and most people, it's like, oh, where's your dad? It's like, oh, he's at home. It's like, he's retired already. I was like, oh, he does work out, doesn't he? But um, no, he's not retired. I say nowadays, they're so used to me and Ryan showing up. And basically, if my dad shows up to your house, that means you've probably got a serious problem. And uh, what else can I waffle about? And there was something else. There was... Um... I think that was there. Yeah, Argo caught fire. I was gonna, I was gonna show you some, but the um, customer was a bit of a um, um, on the cam. What you do is you go. The customer was a bit of a beep, and then um, everyone will be like, "Oh my god, I can't be said about a customer." But they will never know. We'll do an epic transition to Ryan. Let's see what he's up to. Welcome back to East the Tank Illegal with Ryan. Ba 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 ba. Today's episode. We have this metal oil tank, as we can see upon first inspections. Bow! It's on a wooden box. Fantastic, don't think that uh, meets current day regulations. Secondly, bow! It's got a tree next to it. Fantastic! Oh, bow! Wow! Wooden fence right next to it. Amazing! All right next to the annex that has wood all up the walls. Fantastic, very nice looking, may I add. Very sadly, the condition of the oil tank is actually very good. It's not rusty at all. So, um, all I can do is write some paperwork and tell them about it. Until next time, bash! I never know what to say. I feel like we need a nickname for you lot. I'll tell you what, we are Button All Bird Services, or short for Bobs. So you are now known as the, the Bobbers. Right, and um, Bobbers. <laughs> so I'm currently at a boiler which has suited up. Um, I was here, I can't remember this, rather early last week or late the week before. Basically, when I came here, the um, the boiler does not, it was running out of tune basically. The, um, the pump pressure was very low. The CO2 wasn't high enough, it was running too yeah, airy instead of rich. So I put the pump pressure where it was meant to be, and then I set it all up. But I'll be honest, after I changed the nozzle and set it up, it generally took me about an hour to get it about right and was like, uh, this isn't right, it should take five minutes. So um, I was like, right, I say, this is a pain. I say, I could have set up very well. I was left with the customer. I was like, right, 
keep an eye on it, see what happens next. And um, well, I'm here a little while later, and now it's full of soot. So we know that over the time, it's just it's knocking itself out of tune for some reason, and we need to figure out why. Um, so yeah, I've already cleaned all the soot out of it. Um, if you want to know how to clean the soot out of a boiler, well, it's pretty easy. All you do is take the boiler apart, find the soot, over it up, put it back together, boiler's clean. Um, it's not really anything else to that. I'd say it's, it's a pretty long and boring task, but it's in the name. You cleaned the soot out of the boiler. But um, yeah, so now I'm taking the burner apart and um, basically see why it keeps knocking itself out of tune and not running very well, basically. So the first thing I've done is I'm going to take the oil pump. we got a, um, I think a Bentine burner, aren't we? Am I right? Yeah, I think it's a Bentine. Anyway, so the first thing I'm going to do is take the, um, the oil pump off. You do that by, on these burners, you undo them two screws, take the little pipe out, unplug the coil, give it a wiggle, and there you go. Out it comes, and now I'm going to undo them three screws. We're gonna take it off, then that gets us to the fan. Then I'm gonna make sure the fan's all okay and not all clogged up because that could cause a problem. And then, yeah, we'll go from there. So I've now taken them three screws out, and once again, you give it a wiggle, and um, well, out it comes. So if we, well, we've got the little drive shaft and the fan's in there. So if we just give that a spin, make sure it's nice and clear, which looks nice and clean, and give it a big spin. It's nice and quiet. Yeah, that looks all good. But um, yes, that's all good. But the thing I'm a bit skeptical about is that so inside of here, that's the air adjuster. That's how you determine how much oxygen's coming in. So you can um, basically, if you turn it up, then the CO goes down. If you turn it down, the CO goes up. It does the opposite. And I say, when you turn it, this little bit moves, it means it's working. But as you can see, it's pretty much completely shut. So I think, even though you're turning this, it's not actually moving the bill plastic inside, so it's not actually doing anything. So I'm going to see if I can put it back together nicely, maybe just get it so it's working, but it might have a new adjuster by the looks of it. Marvellous. So after further investigation, what was happening is, when you turn the air adjuster, this wasn't moving, and I'm not quite sure what I did, I had to fiddle with it. And now, when I grab my adjust a screwdriver, um, we'll call it Billy for now, then when I turn it, if you look, it very slowly moves. So I'm going to open the air right up, because obviously it's sitting up, and then I'm going to put it back together, change that nozzle, which doesn't look like it's been burning very well, even though I was only changed about two weeks ago, and then we'll fire it up, test it, and hopefully at least just fell to pieces because they are quite common on these, they do fall to pieces. So before I forget, also you got your screw there and a screw there. Make sure inside here is not blocked either because that can cause it. And um, a tip of the trade, if your boiler never shoots like a soot out of it, never try and wipe it when it's wet because it just smudges and makes it 150 times harder to clean. So your best bet is just leave it, hopefully the wind takes most of it, well, if not, in a couple of days when it's dry, then try and clean it, or else you are, yeah, you'll make it 20 times worse and better. Let's add another, um, another quick one. This is to do with all new boilers. So for some reason, to make them more efficient, they've made them way more complicated. So most of them now have a little flame ring, and you have this tiny, tiny little hole. So this hole must line up with the photo cell, as you can sort of see it is at the moment. So the way I do it is I just get a little, little T, poke it through the hole and you see it's just above the fire cell which means that is reading directly on there and also make sure this is nice and clean because if um, that hole's covered it's not going to detect the light and then also with new boilers you've got your little leads in here make sure you pull them back i say this one it's not too much of a worry but some boilers if well like i was saying earlier in the video if them leads uh, above that photo cell, it won't read the line and then it'll lock out. So, um, yeah, I say I've changed the nozzle, gone through it all, I'm gonna put it back together in the boiler and hopefully it works. So, another little tip when you have a boiler on the wall and you disconnect the oil line, make sure you turn it all off or else the oil runs back and then you have to vent it. But in this case, what I've done is, even though it's really a valve layer, but see that for a rainy day, I just tripped the fire valve, but now. You see, we've got boiler. Oh, 
it was in lockout. And um, yeah, I'm gonna fire it up. But when you fire up city boilers, which I won't record because it fires pre precision, is that um, stick a hoover in front of it or else you'll get soot all over the lovely garden and then you're, yeah, and then you've got a moaning customer. So, boiler is not smoking anymore, which is good. And so, oh, I'm giving you too many tips today. Um, yeah, you're, you're very lucky. And when it's set up, it's over air a little bit. Because the reason they set up is because it's running too rich. So if we over air it, then um, yeah, then it burns off a bit cleaner. And then you've got to let it run for 10 or 15 minutes. Put my machine in it. Once my machine's in it, test it. And then that's when I'm going to find out if it's all working. But um, in the meantime, instead of sitting in the penny, it's going 15 minutes away from the time. I've got a bit of a mess to clear up now. The boiler's now running. Um, well, as you can see, yeah, it's, it's got quite a bit of soot in there. First it's burning it off, I should stop soon because I gave that blooming good clean. So, we have now poke in it, as you see it's on 12.4, it's running a bit rich. Well, originally, when I turned down the air adjuster, it wouldn't do anything. But now, when I turn it, so we're going to we're turning crosswise to add air, which makes it goes down. And if we look, there we go. It's working now because this is all dropping down which is good so yeah so i'm gonna let it run for a little bit um as i say we need to yeah the worst part about certain up boilers is the mess it makes so i want to say yeah i was gonna set it all up make sure happy and dandy but um yeah if you ever get a boiler or boiler or wall star or anything which um i'll say a certain up and you can't get the setup right it's normally some to do the air adjuster i have also made a little friend a fellow ginger Hello little ginger, fellow ginger, see, if you're a ginger, look at this, oh, oh, I'm not that scary me, as you can see, us gingers are in our habitat, us gingers connect to each other, oh yeah, look at that, alright, see you later Garfield. So we have a, had a very productive week. Um, as I say, we showed you a couple of um, breakdowns on boilers and cookers and hopefully you learned something. But yeah, unfortunately, this is the end of this YouTube vlog. And yeah, you got Robert back next week. He hasn't retired yet. You, you've still got a long time left, Robert. You're not allowed to retire. But um, we're not just gonna end it here. Obviously, it's not a button or burner services vlog if we don't have a, um, a little food review. So I just went to the bakery and Look at this bad boy. Oh, I've dropped the sausage. It's a um, sausage and bacon roll, which um from the baker's race. Mmm, proper good. So I'm going to chow down on that. And also, these are quite cool. They're like little mini donut things from the bakeries. They, they look quite nice, so I'm going to get them a try. And I've got chocolate milkshake, so it's like it's Friday, so they ain't being healthy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat good. So yeah, to say, I'd like to um, thank you for watching this week's YouTube vlog. Um, if you made it this far, comment banana in the comments. Um, <laughs> okay, and um, yeah, until next week, I hope you have a lovely week. Um, I'm of course on Friday, so have a lovely evening. As I say, it's currently quarter to 10. And um, yeah, as I say, have a lovely weekend and make sure you stay safe.